On December 25, 2017, Oak Bay, a quiet seaside community in Victoria, Canada, sparkled under the festive lights of Christmas. Homes lined the streets, each window aglow with the soft light of decorated trees and colorful displays of Santa Claus and reindeer. The air, usually brisk and filled with the scent of winter, carried the laughter and chatter of families celebrating the season. Yet, this picturesque setting was starkly disrupted by the piercing sound of police sirens that evening. The sirens converged on a modest family home, the residence of Sarah Cotton. What was meant to be a night of joyous celebrations had taken a dark turn. The flashing blue and red lights cast long, ominous shadows across the snow-covered lawn, hinting at the gravity of the situation unfolding inside. Neighbors, drawn by the commotion, watched from their doorways, a mix of concern and curiosity etched on their faces. As the community nestled in the safety of their warm homes, Sarah's house stood eerily silent. The usual cheer of the holiday was overshadowed by a growing sense of dread. What happened in this seemingly peaceful home to draw such urgent attention from the authorities on Christmas Day? Sarah Cotton grew up in Victoria, Canada, where she established her roots in a community known for its closeness and scenic beauty. She was a bright and ambitious woman, characterized by her warm smile and a keen interest in communication and public relations. After graduating from the University of Victoria in 2005, she quickly stepped into the professional world, securing an internship that paved the way for her future career in communications. By 2007, Sarah had joined the Tartan Group, a well-respected public relations firm where she excelled and quickly made a name for herself through her dedication and the quality of her work. Her early successes in her career were not just a testament to her skills, but also to her genuine passion for connecting with people and telling stories that mattered. Family was always central to Sarah's life. She was particularly close to her father, who was not only a loving parent, but also her greatest supporter. His guidance and protection were constant throughout her life, providing a foundation of security and confidence that Sarah drew upon in all areas of her life. His sudden death in a car accident in 2013 was a devastating blow that shook the very core of her existence, leaving a void that was difficult to fill. The loss deeply affected Sarah, altering her outlook and emotional resilience. It was during this vulnerable time that her relationship with Andrew, whom she had met and married several years prior, began to show signs of strain. The changes in Sarah's life set the stage for a tumultuous period that would challenge her in ways she had never anticipated. Sarah first crossed paths with Andrew Barry in 2009, while they both worked at British Columbia Ferries, a public company providing transport between the mainland and coastal islands of British Columbia. Their initial connection was sparked by mutual interests and shared experiences at work, quickly blossoming into a romantic relationship. Sarah found Andrew's charm and seemingly laid-back attitude refreshing, and it wasn't long before their casual dating evolved into something more serious. In 2010, buoyed by a year of happy memories and shared dreams, Andrew proposed, and Sarah accepted without hesitation. They married in a modest ceremony in Victoria, surrounded by close family and friends. The couple's union marked the beginning of what Sarah envisioned as a lifelong partnership, filled with love, support, and mutual respect, a foundation they hoped to build their future family upon. The birth of Chloe in 2011 and then Aubrey in 2013 brought immense joy to Sarah and Andrew's lives. The couple, now parents, initially embraced their new roles with enthusiasm. However, the demands of parenthood began to reveal cracks in their relationship. Andrew's demeanor changed gradually, his once easygoing nature giving way to moments of unpredictability and frustration. Sarah, deeply committed to her children's well-being, often found herself mediating to maintain peace at home. The situation deteriorated further following the unexpected death of Sarah's father in late 2013. His passing removed a crucial pillar of emotional support from Sarah's life, deeply affecting her resilience and mental state. Her father had been a buffer against Andrew's growing unpredictability, and without him, the household dynamics shifted significantly. Andrew's behavior became increasingly difficult for Sarah to manage, especially as she dealt with her own grief. By 2014, the relationship faced severe strains as Andrew's temper led to verbal altercations that often occurred in front of the children. The environment at home, once a haven for Sarah, began to feel tense and unstable. As the foundation of their marriage weakened, 
Sarah's efforts to keep the family unit intact became more challenging, setting the stage for further conflicts that would eventually push the couple to their breaking point. Tensions in Sarah and Andrew's marriage reached a critical point in early 2015. Andrew's aggression escalated beyond harsh words to physical confrontations. A particularly alarming incident occurred in April 2015 when an argument spiraled out of control. Andrew, in a fit of rage, pinned Sarah against the wall and began choking her. Terrified, Sarah managed to break free and called the police. This marked a turning point for Sarah, realizing that the safety of herself and her children was at stake. Following the choking incident, Sarah took decisive action. She obtained a restraining order that legally barred Andrew from coming near her or the children. With the law on her side, she felt a temporary relief, but the ordeal was far from over. In the months that followed, the couple initiated divorce proceedings. The process was fraught with challenges, primarily centered around custody of Chloe and Aubrey. The court battles were lengthy and emotionally draining. Sarah fought to ensure that Andrew's access to the children was limited, arguing his unpredictable behavior made him a risk to their safety. The divorce was finalized later that year, granting Sarah full custody of the children, while Andrew was allowed supervised visits only. The court mandated Andrew to pay child support, an obligation he met inconsistently, adding further strain to the post-divorce dynamics. This period marked a new chapter of independence for Sarah, who was determined to rebuild a safe and stable life for her daughters. After their separation and divorce in 2015, Sarah and Andrew entered into a contentious period over the custody of Chloe and Aubrey. The initial custody agreement allowed Andrew only supervised visits, reflecting the court's concerns over his past aggressive behavior. Despite the supervision, these visits were a source of ongoing stress for Sarah, who remained vigilant about the safety of her daughters. The legal battles also extended into financial areas, particularly over child support and the division of property. Andrew was inconsistent in making child support payments, complicating Sarah's financial situation as she strived to provide for Chloe and Aubrey. The court's involvement became necessary to enforce these payments, adding layers of legal disputes to the already strained relationship between Sarah and Andrew. In 2016, another significant legal decision was made regarding the family home. The court ordered Andrew to sell his share of the property to Sarah at a reduced price. The cost of share of the property was $60,000, and Andrew was ordered to sell it for $20,000, considering the outstanding child support. This decision was intended to alleviate some of the financial burden on Sarah while ensuring the children's home environment remained stable. Andrew, however, was displeased with this arrangement, viewing it as unfair and financially disadvantageous. These ongoing legal disputes were not only financially draining, but also emotionally taxing for both parties. The constant back and forth in court, the need for lawyers, and the scrutiny of private family matters added significant stress to Sarah's life. Yet, she remained focused on securing a safe and stable future for her daughters, fighting tirelessly to keep Andrew's influence limited and their living situation secure. The legal battles, while challenging, were a necessary evil to protect her daughters from the instability that Andrew's behavior could bring into their lives. Sarah celebrated her birthday on December 21, 2017, a day filled with small joys and the laughter of her daughters, Chloe and Aubrey. The birthday was marked by a cozy gathering at home where Chloe and Aubrey helped their mother blow out the candles, their faces lit with excitement. This family celebration was a brief respite from the ongoing challenges Sarah faced, allowing them all to relish in moments of togetherness and love. With her birthday behind her, Sarah turned her attention to preparing for Christmas. She decorated their home with care, hanging stockings, setting up a beautifully adorned Christmas tree, and wrapping presents that sat under the tree, waiting to be opened by excited little hands. Each decoration added to the festive atmosphere, but also weighed on Sarah's heart, as she knew the girls would soon be spending part of their Christmas with Andrew. On the morning of December 25, 2017, Sarah drove Chloe and Aubrey to Andrew's house. As she prepared to leave them there, her emotions were conflicted. She felt uneasy about Andrew's ability to care for their daughters, especially given his past behavior and the current strains in their interactions. Despite the court's assurances and supervised visitation arrangements, Sarah couldn't shake off a deep-seated worry for her daughter's well-being. As she hugged Chloe and Aubrey goodbye, 
Sarah tried to mask her concern with a smile, encouraging them to enjoy their time with their father. She reminded them that she would see them soon, holding back her anxiety as she waved them off at the doorstep. Driving away, Sarah's car became quieter, the absence of her daughter's palpable. She felt a knot in her stomach, a mother's intuition that something was amiss as she headed back to an empty home to wait for their return. On the afternoon of December 25, 2017, as Christmas celebrations continued across Oak Bay, a shadow fell over Sarah's heart. Chloe and Aubrey were due back at noon, but the clock ticked past the hour with no sign of them or a call from Andrew. Sarah's initial worry quickly turned into alarm. She called Andrew's phone multiple times, each call met with silence. No answer came, not even a text. Her attempts to reach him through other means, including messages and emails, also went unanswered. Frustrated and increasingly anxious, Sarah decided she could wait no longer. Accompanied by her mother, she drove back to Andrew's house. As they approached, the lack of festive lights and the silence around the property contrasted sharply with the vibrant holiday spirit seen elsewhere in the neighborhood. The unease deepened when repeated knocks on Andrew's door went unanswered. Peering through the windows revealed nothing. The house appeared unusually still, almost as if abandoned. Sarah's mother suggested they speak with the neighbors. One neighbor recalled hearing laughter from the children in the morning, but noted it had abruptly stopped around noon. Another mentioned hearing unusual noises, like thuds, bangs, and screams, which they had initially dismissed as holiday revelry. With each passing moment, Sarah's worry turned to panic. Realizing the severity of the situation, Sarah dialed 911. The police arrived swiftly. An officer approached the house, finding the front door unlocked. Stepping inside, the festive air gave way to a chilling scene. The entryway was dim, the air stale. Switching on his flashlight, the officer's beam cut through the darkness, revealing a horrifying scene. The walls and floor were smeared with blood, traces leading down the hallway. Following the grim trail, the officer entered the living room, where the Christmas tree stood ironically adorned next to scenes of apparent violence. The search led to the bedrooms. In one, he found a lifeless Chloe lying on her bed, surrounded by blood-soaked gifts. The room was in disarray, bloody, with signs of a desperate struggle. In another bedroom, Aubrey was discovered under similar tragic circumstances, her small body also bearing signs of violence. The officer urgently called for backup, his voice tense over the radio. Additional police units and medical responders were dispatched as the home became a crime scene. The discovery was relayed to Sarah, who was waiting outside, gripped by a mix of hope and dread. When informed of the devastating news, her world shattered. The street filled with the sounds of Christmas was starkly contrasted by her heart-wrenching screams, mourning the unimaginable loss of her daughters. Meanwhile, the police found Andrew in the bathroom, barely alive, with injuries that appeared self-inflicted. His throat was cut, several stabs on the area of his chest, similar to the type of stabs Chloe and Aubrey had. Each of his breaths came heavier than the last. He was quickly attended to by paramedics who provided first aid before rushing him to the hospital where he was placed under police guard. His survival meant that he could potentially provide answers to the many questions about what had happened to Chloe and Aubrey. After confirming the situation, the officer who first entered secured the area to ensure no further danger. Additional police and forensic units arrived promptly, setting up a perimeter to preserve the integrity of the crime scene. The forensic team began their meticulous work, documenting every detail, photographing the scene, and collecting physical evidence that could help explain the sequence of events leading to the children's deaths. In the living room and bedrooms, evidence of a struggle was apparent. Toys and gifts were scattered, some stained with blood, telling a silent, harrowing story of the children's last moments. The forensic team carefully collected samples of blood, fingerprints, and fibers, focusing on the bloody bat found near Chloe and the knife wounds on both children, which were consistent with the kitchen knives taken from Andrew's home. As the investigation unfolded inside, Sarah, kept back by police at a safe distance, struggled to comprehend the news of her daughter's deaths. Her anguish filled the cold Christmas air, a stark contrast to the laughter and light of other homes celebrating the day. Family members and friends arrived, drawn by the news, forming a tight circle around her, trying to offer comfort in the face of overwhelming grief. 
Sarah's reaction was a visceral portrait of a mother's worst nightmare unfolding in real time. In the aftermath of the tragic events on December 25, 2017, the focus swiftly shifted to gathering and processing evidence to piece together the sequence of events that led to the deaths of Chloe and Aubrey Berry. Forensic teams were meticulous in their approach, collecting blood samples, fingerprints, and DNA from the scene. Each item was carefully cataloged to build a comprehensive picture of the crime. The autopsies on Chloe and Aubrey were conducted promptly. The results were heart-wrenching. Chloe had suffered multiple blunt force traumas to her head, which were fatal, along with numerous stab wounds across her body. She was struck hard with a bat, found near her body covered in blood. Her skull was broken. 26 stab wounds were found on her body. The main cause of her death was loss of blood. Aubrey's autopsy revealed a similar brutal attack with 32 stab wounds, which also caused fatal bleeding. The nature and multiplicity of their injuries indicated a deliberate and sustained attack, which was particularly difficult for all involved to come to terms with. The exact time of their deaths was not possible to identify. It seemed like Andrew stabbed the front and back side of the girls separately, turning them around. Meanwhile, Andrew Barry was found in a critical condition with self-inflicted wounds, suggesting an attempted suicide. He was rushed to hospital, where he was stabilized and placed under intensive care. His injuries included a deep cut to his throat and several stabs to his chest. As he lay hospitalized, guarded by police, the question of his motive and the sequence of events that led him to harm his own daughters became central to the investigation. The evidence gathered from the home and the medical examinations formed the basis of the case against Andrew. The findings from the crime scene were consistent with a violent struggle taking place, contradicting any initial thoughts of an outside intruder. As Andrew began to recover from his injuries, the police prepared to question him, seeking answers that would clarify the events that transpired in that tragic Christmas setting. The investigation into the tragic deaths of Chloe and Aubrey also brought to light Andrew Barry's personal struggles, particularly his escalating gambling addiction, which became severe after his separation from Sarah. His addiction to gambling was not just a personal vice. It had significant financial problems. After losing his job, Andrew's financial stability crumbled, plunging him into deep debt. He was known to frequent casinos, and his financial desperation grew as he borrowed money, unable to keep up with his losses. This financial desperation was highlighted during the trial through evidence and testimonies about Andrew's debts. It was revealed that he owed substantial amounts to various creditors, which some initially speculated might have provided a motive for someone he owed to be involved in the tragic events. However, as the trial progressed, forensic evidence firmly pointed to Andrew as the perpetrator, proving the theory of an outside involvement. On Christmas Eve 2017, a glimpse into a seemingly ordinary family moment was captured. Camera footage showed Andrew Barry shopping with his daughters, Chloe and Aubrey. The video, recorded just hours before the tragic events, depicted them moving through the aisles, picking out last-minute holiday supplies. Another poignant piece of evidence was a letter found at the scene, addressed to Andrew's sister. In the letter, written as if it were his last, Andrew expressed deep frustrations and resentments towards Sarah, blaming her for his troubles. He wrote about feeling betrayed and cornered, providing a chilling insight into his state of mind before the murders. By his letter, he still loved his wife and his daughters. He did not want to live anymore, but also did not want to leave the world without his beloved daughters. This letter explained Andrew's motives. The prosecution used this letter to argue that Andrew's actions were premeditated, stemming from a place of anger and despair. After weeks of emotional testimonies and rigorous examination of evidence, the trial reached its climax. 
On a solemn day in late 2018, the jury delivered their verdict. Andrew Barry was found guilty of two counts of second-degree murder for the deaths of his daughters, Chloe and Aubrey. The courtroom, filled with tense anticipation, let out a collective, subdued sigh as the verdict was read. Some wept softly, others simply nodded, their expressions a mixture of relief and sorrow. The sentencing phase followed shortly after the conviction. The judge sentenced Andrew to life in prison, with no possibility of parole for 22 years. This decision was met with mixed reactions. While some felt that justice had been served, others, especially those close to Sarah and her daughters, thought that the sentence could never truly compensate for the loss of Chloe and Aubrey. The community, which had followed the case closely and supported Sarah throughout the trial, continued to show their solidarity. The local newspapers and social media were filled with opinions, condolences, and calls for changes to how such cases are handled in the future. The tragic end of two young lives not only left a permanent mark on those who knew them, but also on the community that mourned the loss of innocence in such a brutal, heart-wrenching way. No one could predict that a second chance would lead to that. Thank you for joining us in remembering Chloe and Aubrey and reflecting on this poignant story. It is our hope that sharing their story will contribute to heightened awareness and prevention of such tragedies in the future. For now, take care of yourselves and each other and keep the spirit of compassion and vigilance alive in your communities.